this video, I'll be simulating a war between primitive versus futuristic LEGO minifigures. On one side, we've got the minifigures from the past, and on the other side, we've got aliens, robots, and other advanced civilizations. Look at this! For a while now, I've been wondering what it would be like if aliens came around for a visit. I imagine they would show up in force with the intention of nuking us and taking whatever or whoever they want. I'm gonna simulate a war between future Earth and a more primitive version of Earth. Place your bets in chat on who will win. Past or future. Simulating a whole war is not easy because I don't have too much Lego on hand. I'm gonna have to get creative with what little I have to work with, which comes with its own challenges. Grab a snack and make sure you watch until the end because things are not always as they seem. I'll be comparing the the past versus the future in terms of terrain, soldiers, shelter, food, vehicles, and weapons. It's gonna be one of those things where the more you look at it, the less it makes sense. But while you're looking, keep an eye out for these $100 bills. I've hidden 10 of them, so that's $1,000 hidden throughout this video. Happy hunting. In the past, there was a lot of grass, a lot of trees, all different kinds of trees, and really not much else. I couldn't really decide how far back in the past I wanted to go. I'm no history buff, but quick crash course. First, there was the dinosaur age. Then a meteor strike happened. Then a couple years later came evolution. Monkeys turned into cavemen somehow. I didn't have a monkey, so I substituted a banana. I hope that's okay with you. Huh? Over the centuries, humans got less and less furry, except for the actual furries. Somewhere through the years, there was the medieval age with castles and kings and knights and whatnot. There was the Aztec Empire, who liked to carry out human sacrifices to honor the gods. The past can be brutal. Sometimes prisoners of war were left to rot in jail, a pit of snakes and spiders. Other times they were just buried alive. It was a rough existence. There was also the Roman Empire, based in modern-day Italy, home to the gladiators. Italy is also where my ancestors hail from. I wanted to mention them today to honor their legacy, so I bought one Roman general to represent all of Rome. Eleven bucks for this one general. You can thank me in the comments. I also attempted to build a chariot. Here's how that's going. You might be wondering who this honk is. Turns out he's a familiar nugget face. A baby face only a mother could love. I wanted to include a Lego Colosseum as well. I thought that would add to the ambiance. Really make you feel like you're witnessing the past firsthand. But I changed my mind real quick. No Colosseum today. Subscribe if you want to see the Colosseum. If you get me to a million subs, then I'll see if I can pull some strings. The lineup for the primitive side consists of cavemen and orc. Chewbacca and his cousin, the one Aztec representative, along with one Roman general, a conquistador, a gladiator, some vikings, couple dinosaurs, and a whole convention of furries. Full house today. Things aren't looking good for the future. All the grass evaporated, the ice caps have melted, and we're left with just one giant parking lot. An entire floating Lego city. A whole metropolis. I call this Xopolis. It used to be called Twitteropolis, but those were the old days. Now it's just X. In the future, all birds are shot on sight. AI took everyone's jobs, so there's nothing to do but sit around and ride go-karts or go sightseeing in zero-gravity space. Visit Grandma on Mars, or if you really want to get crazy, you could try your luck at winning some overpriced stuffed animals in a claw machine. There are plenty of places to eat at. Robot cafes, tiny trains that deliver food, and Michelin star restaurants fully staffed by robots and managed by none other than cloned Gordon Ramsay himself. These restaurants are quite technologically advanced. They no longer accept coins or cash. Dogecoin and NFTs are the only form of acceptable payment in the future. Every army needs shelter, so for the prehistoric side, we've got a tent. Normally in the past, people lived in houses, but for the sake of going to war, I figured a tent would be more fitting. This is the battlefield area after all. But the whole army couldn't possibly fit into this. They've got two backup options. One, sleeping under the stars, gazing up at space. Sounds nice, but in reality it can be pretty dangerous. Gotta watch out for the furries lurking about in the dark. No offense to furries. Option two is this giant medieval castle. You might remember it from my murdering zombies video. It's Pablo's castle. And as you might recall, Pablo is a psychopath. So no one's stupid enough to actually stay at the castle.
In the future, everyone just stays in their house in this floating Lego city. No need to pitch up survival shelters or anything of the sort. That's peasant behavior. Instead, everyone stuffs themselves into teeny tiny capsule hotels, sleeping in pods. I imagine the future is going to be very Japan-esque. Lots of technology and robots and AI and not much space for anything else. If the past were to go to war with the future, I'm curious to see who would win. The primitive side is used to fighting and fending for themselves. Everyone is in much better physical shape. Whereas in the future, they may be more technologically advanced, but they're also lazy and unmotivated. So I'm putting them through some rigorous training. Some sit-ups, some push-ups, some squats, and in case they get too tired of training, I've been dunking them in ice baths. There are still some similarities in terms of the past versus future. Each side has their own watchtowers. In the past, the watchtower basically just consisted of a giant tree trunk. It works really well. You just kind of climb up the tree trunk and then you watch. Very effective. In the future, all the trees are dead, so they actually had to build a watchtower. They built a very aesthetic-looking watchtower, if I do say so myself. Leave a like if you agree. Nice. In terms of food, the past has a lot of hunters and gatherers. There's no shortage of animals to hunt it and no shortage of fruits and vegetables to gather. They've got such a variety of options ranging from butchered pigs to freshly croaked frogs. There's also fishermen. That's Chad's village occupation. By the way, did I ever mention Chad was Viking by blood? Hence the fashionable headgear. But this is a very romanticized way of looking at the past. It's not always such an idyllic life. He's heading out on a tiny raft to go fishing in the middle of the ocean. There's a storm approaching and things aren't looking so good for this tiny raft. Unfortunately, things weren't made to be waterproof in the past, so I'm afraid this is the end for bad luck Chad. Looks like our soldiers won't be eating fish fillet tonight. In the future, no one's got time to cook anymore, so instead you have private chefs doing the cooking for you. I wanted to experience that firsthand, so I ordered this. This is Factor. Factor has a team of gourmet chefs cook up some fresh, never frozen meals and send it straight to your doorstep. I've been trying to eat better, not only for how I look on the outside, but for how I feel on the inside. I hate feeling tired all the time. I've talked about HelloFresh before. In this household, we cook HelloFresh meals every week. Fun fact, Factor is now owned by HelloFresh. Things have been really busy lately, so I wanted to try Factor. There's no chopping, prepping, or cleaning up. Say no more. There's lots of options. 34 plus weekly meals to choose from. There's dinner options, lunch to go options, breakfast options, and there's even beverage options if you want a quick wellness boost. I'm a beverage kind of guy. I need to get my hands on these next. There's also protein plus meals, calorie smart meals, lots of options depending on what you prefer. I chose from the chef's choice menu. My compliments to the chef. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code loon50 to get 50% off your first factor box. That's code loon50 to get 50% off your first Factor Box. Thank you, Factor, for sponsoring this video. All right, let's talk about the vehicles. The past has chariots and horses and bicycles and army dogs. Scooby-Doo was forcibly drafted into the army to support the cause. Press F in the chat for his noble service. The future has hoverboards, helicopters, and Honda Civics. Here comes Sneep Snop. He's got a hump back and a brain sack. Sneep Snop's driving up to the weapons dealer. That's me. I'm the weapons dealer. If there's gonna be a war, there needs to be weapons. The future has cannons. I made my own cannons. They don't look amazing, but I think they do look like cannons. So that's a plus. There's also tanks. Very tiny tanks. These things are not made to scale. That goes without saying. These are catapults. They do actually work. Not gonna lie, I impressed myself with this build. As for the past, we've got more primitive tools. Mostly swords, a crossbow, a hockey stick, a butcher knife, some barbed wire, and a bottle of all-purpose cleaner for all purposes of cleaning. Things are turning into a bloody mess for both armies. It's an infinite war with no end in sight. Kinda like the US versus Russia. Comment in the chat who you think should win, the future or the past.